This morning, our responsive reading can be found in the African American Heritage Hymnal, number 54, and it is titled, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. In every era, God has chosen men and women to serve the needs of his people. Such a servant was Martin Luther King, Jr., whose birth we celebrate. We're deeply thankful for the life of this 20th century prophet. May the wisdom and words of Martin Luther King rekindle our faith. May the deep love that Dr. King had for all people be released in us, that we too might work miracles in the lives of those who continue to hate. Dr. King taught that only love can overcome hatred bitterness, and fear. May his struggle for social transformation continue in this generation. May all people come to believe that with perseverance, we shall overcome. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. May the work of Dr. King continue to eradicate racial injustice and its ungodly consequences. Dr. King pursued his dream for racial equality by appealing to the conscience of his enemies. May we continue to cultivate the nonviolent discipline of Dr. King, abandoning unrestrained acts of force. He taught us that a heart full of grace and love is just as important as an education. May the spirit of Dr. King continue to flow through our daily living. He believed in self-respect and dignity. 
even though he knew that there would be difficult days ahead. May we have the courage of Dr. King as we continue to stand up for justice, reconciliation, and truth, despite challenge and controversy. Dr. King said that war is never a victory, regardless of the outcome. May the peace of the risen Christ cause the fury of war to vanish from the face of the earth. Dr. King went to the mountaintop. He saw the promised land. He reassured us that we will get there one day. God of glory, be with us on the journey. Amen. Father, we've gathered on this Sabbath for one purpose and one purpose only. And that is to honor, worship, praise, and to lift up your name in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We will forget today all about ourselves and concentrate only on you and Him. We have on this Sabbath remembered the, the price paid by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on Calvary some, some thousand years ago and the joy that is brought, us, brought to us on, in this life and the life to come eternally. Today we welcome the Holy Spirit, Father, to commune with us as we, your family, hear songs of Zion, fervent prayer, a word from on high, uh, and Lord, uh, the shepherd who will deliver it in his unique uh, manner. We wait and anticipate that word. Lord, we remember those who have said, pray for me, remember me because they need a healing and if not a healing they say please pray for grace so that i can withstand whatever i'm going through lord we remember today how glad we are to be in the service to be talking to you father to be remembering your son jesus to be have the holy spirit in our presence oh it's so good to be in the service one more time we don't take it for granted and we appreciate it father everything we ask today father in the precious name of jesus the christ we ask amen amen and amen again God provides, so why do I worry about my life? When you come to my rescue a thousand times, every other voice it is a lie. God provides, God provides. In ways I can't explain and can't deny The little that I have he multiplies Just when I feel he won't show up on time God provides He'll come through When the clouds of doubt rain down on you and test everything you thought you knew now you finally see what god can do for you so tonight close your eyes there's no more need to fight watch god provide God provides It's hard to say when there's no food to eat Or what you see fills all that life will be And will this be another year of misery 
for me but my faith can't survive on just things I see and my feelings can't control my destiny see God I only want what you believe for me so tonight close your eyes there's no more need to fight Ooh, watch God provide he will provide before your eyes oh yes he will right on time and provide whatever you need whatever you need he will provide he'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room to receive so tonight Close your eyes, there's no more need to fight. Watch God provide. Please keep in your prayers, Viola Chandler, Mary Coakley, Rose Howard, Willa Howard, Loretta Owens, Lois Tilly, Paul Easley, Ethel Laster, Mary Brown, Minnie Cooper, Lillian and James Dawson, Sister Vanetta Ellis, Sister Rosemary Gillespie, Sister Claudette Powell, Sister Juanita Brown Smith, Sister Margaret Benton, or the Heyman Blair, Sister Dora Brown, Sister Lucille Rutledge, Garrett Coffin, Regina Scott Davis, Brother Michael Pollard, Sister Sandra Ambrose, Jean Smith, Brother and Sister Dorothy and Robert Willis, Sister Barbara and Brother Willie Lackey, Brother Herbert Wilbur. Also keep in prayer bereaved families, the family of Annie Chapman. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, creator of heaven and earth and sustainer of all life, we thank you for the opportunity to worship and praise you. You are worthy to be praised. We honor and magnify your name. Lord, thank you for bringing us through safely another week. Thank you for watching over us during the night as we slept. We know that it is by your grace and wisdom and your will that we have been given another opportunity. Lord, help us, help us not to, to, to take this opportunity for granted so that we may in everything we do honor you as our Heavenly Father. Give us wisdom so that we, as Christians, will not do anything that will bring dishonor to your name. Help us, Lord. Help us so others will see you in our, in our actions. Lord, help us to say things that are uplifting. Give us wisdom to listen, not quick to anger. Give us the ability to hold our tongues so that we will not, we will not be quick, Lord, to lash out or to, 
or to respond when our feelings have been hurt. Give us wisdom, Lord, to know when it is time to be silent and time to speak. Lord, you know, you know, sometimes we're weak, making decisions that are not pleasing in your sight. We ask for forgiveness. Help us to learn from the mistakes and bad decisions we make. Lord, you know our hearts. If there's anything that is not right, not in agreement with your way, please, sir, restore in us a clean heart, a renewed spirit. We desire to live righteously. Now, Lord, hear our prayer as we pray for the sick and shut in, and as we pray for each other. Lord, we don't know all of the concerns. We do not know all of the needs. But Lord, we know that you are able to fulfill every need. Lord, there are some who have been living with, with a sickness a long time. Some sicknesses may have just been revealed. It may seem as if there is no help to be found. Perhaps the doctors have not given a desirable report. But Lord, we place our trust in you, our complete trust in you. The doctors and scientists are your tools, your servants that you use in the healing process because you are a God who possess all wisdom and all power is in your hands. Please guide them so that they will use their skills and knowledge in treating their patients. We know you can do all things and you have never lost a case. There's no condition that is too hard for you. Touch those who are in the hospital, Lord, in the emergency rooms, in the intensive care units, those who are in convalescent and rehab centers, and those recovering at home, and those who are walking around every day, continuing with daily activities and responsibilities, while at the same time living with the fear of their condition. We place all our conditions, all our struggles, all of our concerns in your hands, Lord. Not only our physical sicknesses, but also our emotional frailties. Where there is sadness and depression, restore the joy of our salvation. Where there is hopelessness, fear, and despair, restore our hope in you. Where there is confusion, please, Lord, peace. Where we live in doubt, increase our faith. Now, Lord, we lift New Calvary and all churches open in your name. Thank you for allowing New Calvary to remain a place of worship. Thank you for allowing New Calvary to be a distribution center for food to families in need and all those who worked to make it happen. Thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, that, that our Christian education continues our Sunday school and, and Bible study classes. Thank you for the work that you are continuing through our members, teachers, deacons, trustees, and associate ministers. Thank you for the reopening committee who is passionately working towards re-entering the building so that things will be put in place for a safe praise and worship experience. Thank you for the leadership of our pastor and first lady. Now, Lord, help us all to remain faithful, obedient, and uplifted. Help us never to give up, but always pushing forward in your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and Amen.
Good morning, family and friends. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. First of all, I want to welcome you here to a New Calvary a Baptist Church in the lovely city of Detroit, uh, where we are a Christ-centered church of committed Christians connecting the community with the cross of Christ. Early on this Sunday morning, here on the 17th of the first month of the new year, I want to just for a few minutes uh, share with you an encouraging word uh, that may uh, uh, bless you, uh, not only throughout this week, uh, but for the rest of your lives. I'd like for you to join with me to the uh, First Samuel, an Old Testament passage of scripture, First Samuel chapter three, beginning at verse number one and ending at verse number 10. Um, this uh, sermon will go beyond verse number 10, but the verses I want to isolate is found in 1 Samuel chapter 3, beginning at verse number 1 and ending at verse number 10. This is an Old Testament passage of Scripture. The Bible is broken up into uh, two halves, the Old and the New. The Old Testament has 39 books. Uh, the New Testament has 27. Uh, the Old Testament begins with Genesis, ends with Malachi. Uh, the New Testament begins with Matthew and ends with the book of Revelation. So, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel. And that's the book that we will journey in. I'll be reading from the New International Version, which should be similar uh, to what you are accustomed to. And it reads as follows. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of the Lord was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, here I, but Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up and ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him a third time. The Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and ran and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, Say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. I'd like to, for a few minutes, uh, add a tag to this particular text, for it constitutes the backdrop of what we're going to navigate uh, in today. And that is speak, Lord, speak, Lord. And if that doesn't uh, fit your fancy, <clears throat> here's another uh, subject matter that I'd like to peruse. Loud and wrong versus soft and right. Loud and wrong versus soft and right. Would you join with me in a word of prayer? Father, we need you. Uh, we need your presence. We need your anointing. We need your direction. We need the unction of your Holy Spirit. As we take a deep dive into this text, uh, to glean from it wisdom and knowledge and understanding to help us in daily living. Lord, I pray that you empty me, hide me behind the cross so that I might present a living savior. Thank you for another opportunity that you have blessed me in this appointed time to 
preach and teach your word with boldness. Thank you for your word, which is our roadmap to salvation. I pray that this message uh, not fall on deaf ears, but makes the comfortable uncomfortable. Your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, we ask all things. Let everyone say amen and amen. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. It's always been a challenge. It's always been a level of curiosity that has intrigued the church of today about pinpointing the actual voice of God. Uh, to those who are familiar with the written pericope of scripture, uh, the panorama of this text is a constant reminder uh, that God speaks to us in unusual ways. God speaks to us in unusual methods. God speaks to us sometimes through creation. Uh, God speaks to us through people. Sometimes God speaks to us through inanimate objects. But yet the fact, it's good to know that God speaks to us. I'm, I am a living witness. Uh, there have been uh, numerous instances in my life and even in preaching moments where I've come to the uh, resolution uh, that I am just a mere instrument. It is the presence of God uh, that utilized the instrument of JT to be able to speak and preach and teach his word with boldness. It is the notes, the musicality of, uh, of, of, of the text uh, that God uh, speaks to me, not only through uh, the things that I've learned uh, in seminary, the things I've learned, uh, even through experiences. But there are times in which God speaks and his voice, what he says, is specifically for me or for me to share to someone else. It's still his words. It's still his Voice. It's it's still his passage of scripture. So it's incumbent upon me to make sure that I am not taking credit for what God uh, tethers to the message behind his voice. Certainly, certainly, there are eloquent speakers who uh, uh, who have uh, learned through. Scholastic or learn through time, or even mimic those that they value. But regardless of your eloquency of speech, you can sound good and still say nothing. You can you can sound so profound and yet still cause people to lose their life. You can sound or you can massage or, 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 or pontificate uh, eloquency of speech and yet not really have too much to say. But I'm glad to know that even in moments like where we are currently navigating through right now, it's 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 good to know that 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 I can say or you can say with no hesitation, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. This this passage of scripture um, is 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 populated with with so much that we can uh, extract and, 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 and look at our lives today. And it can speak to us and give us some direction and comfort for the challenges that we are even facing. For the text opens up and it says, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord in Eli. In those days, <laughs> the text says, in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There was not many visions. We, we can say that 
those moments, those times in which the, lure, the word of the Lord was rare, the volume was turned down. When the volume of the word of the Lord is turned down, the volume of society is turned up. The unfortunate reality is when the word of the Lord is rare, the word of society, the words of the challenges that exist in this world today is so loud that it causes people and not only uh, people who are not connected to God, but sometimes even those in the church to listen more uh, to, 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 to those outside of the world than specifically what God is saying. The text reminds us that this boy who was ministering before the Lord under Eli, in essence, means that Samuel was such he, he he was such a novice that he needed that relationship with Eli to be able to matriculate and 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 and, and be qualified in the church. But the text says there that the word of the Lord was rare, that there were not many visions and the health was declining in the prophet Eli. But there's an encouraging word in that text that lets us know when the word of the Lord is rare, when there isn't too much vision going on in the land, the text says the lamp God had not yet gone out. And, and that's an encouraging word for somebody here today. You, you may be at a point in your life where it seems like the word of the Lord has been minimized. It, it may seem like visions and miracles are not taking place on your street, on your row, in your life. But thanks be to God, it's right there in the text. The lamp of God has not yet gone out. The presence of God has not yet dissipated. Uh, the, the, the presence of God has not yet disappeared. But thanks be to God, if I can't get a word, if I, if I can't get a miracle, at least I know that the presence of God has not exited out of my life. And that's a word for somebody. You may feel like you are all alone. You may feel like it's just me, myself, and I. You may be in a situation right now where you can't bring the word of God to your remembrance. The family and friends don't have the right word, but thanks be to God, the lamp of God has not yet gone out. That's why these last four years, even though it was a struggle for most of us, aren't you glad that the lamp of God has not gone out? We we may have we may be suffering right now through uh, this pandemic crisis. We may be struggling because of the economic turmoil. This past administration has brought us through, but thanks be to God that the lamp has not gone out. Your 401k may have gone from whatever number to zero. Your bank account, uh, your money may be funny and your change may be strange. Your friends may have left you, but thanks be to God that the lamp of God has not gone out. And because the lamp of God has not gone out, we can put in the center of the table that there is one more move for God to make. Text says the lamp of God, lamp of God has not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. That, that lets you know that even when tragedy and turmoil is not only going on in the world, not only going on in this nation, not only going on in this state and in this city, God is still working behind the scenes, creating a salvific power like never before to pull us out of the murk and mire of life. That uh, uh, 45 as tragic of a leader 
that he was does not have the last say so. And that's why, because when January 20th comes, uh, we, we, we're going to wave him goodbye and we're going to see God work like never before. And that's not to say that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris uh, will have all the answers. That's not to say that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will not make mistakes or be invincible uh, to some challenges uh, 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 that they face as a result of the previous administration. But I'm so glad to know that even if they fail, the lamp of God will not burn out. Yet in this text, the tension in this text is the fact that God is speaking to Samuel. Samuel is working in the church and yet he does not recognize the voice of God. And I know because Samuel is of a young age and, and we could probably uh, give him room uh, to, to matriculate and grow in the church. But if you're honest with yourself, there are people that claim to be connected to the church, that claim to be connected to a loving and forgiving God, working and still not recognize the voice of God. And the challenge is, not only there are, are there those that are in the church that, are, that cannot or do not recognize the voice of God, but then there are those in the church that are faced with the temptation of speaking on behalf of God but have not been given authorization. Okay, let me let, 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 let me fix this for you so you can understand. The text says that God shows up in the church and he speaks to Samuel and he says to Samuel, he calls to Samuel and Samuel answers, here I am. But yet the text says he ran to Eli. Eli, who was a prophet in the church. Now, it's, it's one thing to be in the church and, and not recognize the voice of God while you're in his house. But it's another thing to face the temptation of taking credit for the voice that's spoken, and it's not been authorized. I'm glad in the text, in the text, I'm glad in the text that Eli did not fall to temptation and say to Samuel, uh, yeah, that, that was my voice. But yet we live in a society in 2020 and 2021 where there are preachers and prognosticators and teachers who are taking credit when God has not given them the authority to speak on God's behalf. That's why you got to be careful to make sure you are sent and you didn't just win. That, that, that's, that's the point in my text. I'm getting ahead of myself. We, we've got to, point number one, recognize the presence and the power of the call of God on an individual's life. Now, in order for you to uh, uh, answer the call of God, you must first know the voice of God. And you got to be cognizant and aware that it is God that has called you and not man that has called you. Make sure either God is the one that's called you and it's not man. Because when man calls you, They'll leave you out there by yourself if you make a mistake. But when God calls you, he has a way of escape, a way of comfort, but he or he will not put on you more than you can bear. He equips you for the challenges that you face if you just keep to his will, his word, and his way. And many of us know that many were many went 
but not too many were sent. As a leader in the church, you've got to understand there is a huge risk in speaking for God when God has not spoken to you. As parents, we've got to be cognizant and aware that if we're bringing up children in the admonition of the Lord, we've got to make sure that when your, your children has got to understand the authority behind your voice. And when they grow up and become successful citizens and adults, they'll recognize that the authority in the voice of my parents is the same type of authority that God has over my life. The, the reason why uh, some some children grow up to be adults and and, and, and and ain't studying what what God says is because they didn't pay attention to what their parents said. It, it very rarely do you find a case where children who were wayward and defiant of their parents were, were would all of a sudden be obedient to the will and word and way of God. So we've got to make sure that we understand the call of God. And then the text highlights the response of God. The, 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 the text says that, that God called to Samuel. The text says that Samuel ran to, to Eli because he did not recognize the voice of God. And Eli was in a pivotal situation where he could have easily said, well, uh, I'm going to take credit for something that I did not say. And the text says that, that Samuel went back and forth, back and forth, three times. But it was until Eli said to himself, God is speaking to Samuel. I'm glad Eli did that. I'm glad Eli did not do like some workers and preachers and teachers in the church. Take credit for what God is directly speaking to the people. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You know how some folks they, they they come up to you and say, you know, you know, uh, God told me to tell you uh, that you need to do X, Y, Z, and be with one, two, three, and do X and do uh, yellow, a uh, black, black and green. And then you say to yourself, well, wait a minute now. If I'm in relationship with God, why would God go around and tell you to tell me when he could have just told me? But then also the litmus test is not only that, but you've got to make sure that whatever it is that God does send to, for someone to deliver to you, that it is lined up with what he's already said. Okay, y'all just missed. And that's just what I'm saying is, you've got to have a firm grasp of the word of God to be able to recognize the word of God from someone else who's delivering you what thus saith the Lord. Even in this preaching moment right now, if, if, if what I'm saying doesn't line up with what the word of God has already said, then you have the power and the authority to say, just like Eli told Samuel, um, I didn't call you, but what I do want you to do is the next time you hear the voice of God, you say with no hesitation, speak Lord for your servant is listening. And, and when you recognize the voice of God, when you respond to the voice of God, you will then hear, and here's my, my last point. Point number one was recognize the response of God. Point number two, point number one is recognize the call of God. Point number two is recognize the response of God. And then my final point, when you recognize the response of God, when you know you've been called by God, the message that he delivers to you to be delivered to others is the justice of God. And, 
And here's the thing about the justice of God. That's why God says in his word, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. That's why God says in his word, um, I'll fight your battles. That's why God says in his word, uh, be angry, but sin not. The justice of God is swift and succinct. If we trust and rely on the justice of God, when your, when your enemies try to come and pull you down, when the, your enemy tries to come with lies and deceit, when the enemy tries to come with mess that is inconsistent with the word of God, you just sometimes got to just step back and be silent and let the voice of God do what it do. So God's justice is swift and succinct. And check this, God's justice shouldn't be a surprise to believers. Folks, when you see God implement justice, when, when those that use injustice devices to try to divide and conquer, and when God shows up and just totally destroys and annihilates what uh, uh, naysayers thought had some kind of perpetuation where it could survive through the test of time, and God, with the flick of a switch, causes it to destroy, be destroyed, it should not surprise believers. That's why when you fully put your faith and trust in God, you will see those like Trump and those that follow Trump will all fall down and will not be a surprise to believers. Because here's, here's the reason why it won't be a surprise to believers. Because you're going to hear a believer say, oh, I, I, I've seen this before. I never forget. I never forget when, 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 uh, when Trump first got in office. I, and I mean, he was hot off the press had a conversation with, with my mother-in-law and she said to me, she said, you know what, JT? I didn't seen this before. And now mind you, I'm, I'm upset. I'm losing my mind. I'm discouraged because I'm saying to myself, I'm, I'm giving the enemy more credit than he deserved. I'm saying, oh my God, Trump's going to do eight years. Oh my God, he's going to destroy this nation. My mother-in-law said to me, I hadn't seen this before. As a matter of fact, this same type of president is the same type of president I've seen in Richard Nixon. In the same way Richard Nixon is going to fail and fall is the same way this president is going to fall. Now, now I was worried. I was perplexed. But when you have seen this before, you have comfort in knowing that when the voice of God speaks, justice is going to be held. Now, in that journey between the call and the voice and the response, and justice, it's going to be a little rough. It's rough for Eli because the message, <laughs> the message that God spoke to Samuel not only impacted the people that Samuel was going to be prophetic about, but the message that God spoke to Samuel was also going to bring justice to Eli's sons. That's another message for another time. But man, when you read about what God said uh, about what's going to happen to Eli's son because they uh, desecrated uh, the, the church and the temple of God, his justice is sure. And and the unfortunate reality is when Samuel shared the justice of God to Eli, Eli was not shocked. There, there are a lot of believers, there are a lot of Christians who are not shocked that we came out of this and we're still navigating through this storm. There are a lot of believers, there are a lot of faith praying baptized believers who are not shocked that Trump only lasted four years. Want to know why they're not shocked? Because they heard a word from God. This, this word that they heard, 
was not a loud voice. This word of God was not something that had to shout and make all kind of noise and say nothing. But this was a still, sweet voice that said to believers in Christ, I got you. Don't worry about a thing. Put my your faith and trust in me. You know, I, I'm a movie buff. And, 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 and uh, there, there's a movie, the, the name of the, the movie escapes me, but it's a movie with um, uh, Denzel Washington. And he's playing a, a famous uh, mob boss. And he had all his brothers and cousins working with him. One of his brothers uh, got so excited about power, about authority, about prestige, that instead of him moving silently, he bought the loudest suit, um, bought the, the biggest hat, and, and, and made sure the suit was the most fluorescent color. Denzel Washington pulled him aside and said, wait a minute now. What, 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 why you got this on? You you look like it's a costume. Why, why are you the loudest person in here? And, and, and the brother said, well, this, this, is, this is how I like it. Denzel in his character said to him, the loudest person in the room brings the most attention to himself. If you are loud, not only in your presentation, but you are, if you are so loud, if you are, if you think you are louder than God, better be careful because you could be loud and wrong. But thanks be to God in a still soft voice, the same way he spoke to Samuel, the same way he's speaking to us right now. And as we walk to celebrate the 20th in this inauguration, there are going to be many that are going to have tears of joy. There are many that are going to be upset and angry. But then there are those that are going to sit back and thank God. Because what they were revealed to four years ago have been affirmed to them today. God does not always let evil continue. And when God shuts the mouths of those who make the loudest voices, they leave off the scene quietly, quieter than they came. And I'm not trying to put anything on this administration that's leaving. Some of the stuff that's being put on him, he put on himself. But that is a learning lesson for us. If you are going to talk about how you have all of this power and all of this authority and all of this uh, 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 fellowship, you better make sure you are speaking truth. You better make sure what you're saying is consistent with the word of God. Because there's always this old adage, the higher they go, the harder they fall. And, and, and I'd rather fall in the arms of God than fall into the failures of my choices. This, these last four years has been a learning lesson for all of us. I, I don't know about y'all, but this has caused me to really, really put some depth in my relationship with God. It caused me to have a stronger prayer life. It caused me to get in my word more. And it's unfortunate that it took all of this. But I'm glad to know that the Lamb of God, regardless of this pandemic crisis, I'm glad to know the Lamb of God, regardless of what we've dealt with from an economic situation, not only domestically, but internationally, I'm glad that the Lamb of God is not gone out, but it's still burning. And if it's still burning in your life, it is at that moment, even in the midst of a confused situation, 
you can say with no hesitation, speak, Lord. Listen to what God is saying to you. Here's the challenge. Do it. Whatever it is. Maybe a, a tough message for you. It may be a tough message for your children. It may be a tough message for your spouse. It may be a tough message for you to deliver. God is depending upon you to deliver the unadulterated truth and the word because it is that word that's gonna set the captives free. It's that word that's gonna encourage somebody who's at the end of their rope. It's that word that's gonna encourage someone to not give up. It's that word that's gonna encourage someone. Continue in that purpose. I pray this message blesses you because man, it shows up bless me because I can't wait to celebrate this week. I know it had to be because the, the voice of God spoke to 19 million people that went to the polls and voted and then spoke to an additional three, additional four million people that went to vote in Georgia. And he's going to speak to us on the 20th and remind us that regardless of how much power Trump thought he had, God who has all power never faces an election every year. God who has all power never gets impeached. God who has all power never leaves the throne in shame. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather have the all-powerful God speak over my life than somebody who, 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 who can't even speak an intelligent thing ever. May God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. Amen. Good day, family and friends of New Calvary, uh, as well as those that are near and far. I wanted to take this opportunity and talk a little bit about uh, our church, talk a little bit about our nation, our city, and some of the uh, challenges that we are facing. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we as a church, uh, we are excited about this particular week uh, because we are going to celebrate uh, the inauguration of uh, President Joe Biden and the monumental, historic appointment to the vice presidency, uh, Kamala Harris. And so as we celebrate, uh, the unfortunate reality is that uh, the previous week, uh, our nation uh, went through a very traumatic experience with uh, the insurrection of the Capitol Unfortunately, because of the direction that we're going as a nation, even though some are excited, there are those that are upset by the, the direction and the choices that's being made. So first and foremost, uh, in the midst of our celebration, we have to be very cautious of not only our surroundings, uh, but be, be cautious uh, for our family and friends and those that we are connected with. So in the midst of this celebration, certainly uh, I pray that uh, all of us uh, be focused on peace. Uh, all of us uh, be focused uh, on uh, just the paradigm shift that we are going to face from uh, the uh, traumatic journey we've experienced in these last four years. I don't know about you, but these four years felt like eight years, 16 years. Uh, but I'm so glad to know that even in the midst of the, tri the trials and the tragedies that we have faced as a result of this pandemic crisis, of this economic downturn, that God heard our prayers. And so it is my hope that uh, during this inauguration uh, season that our nation is facing, uh, that we certainly lift up uh, Joe Biden, his family, 
as well as Kamala Harris and her family. Uh, just because we, uh, we, we, we're gonna have a new president and a new vice president doesn't mean that the anger, um, uh, the evil will subside. So especially to my family and friends that are connected to the largest, larger cities like uh, here uh, in Detroit, as well as those in Chicago, as well as even those that are connected to us in DC and a lot of uh, cities in the South. Please be safe. Please be very cautious and aware of your surroundings. If you see something, uh, give the local authorities a call um, and, and, and be safe even during this pandemic crisis. Hopefully uh, here in the state of Michigan, uh, with the new regime that's going to come up in the White House, we pray uh, that the uh, distribution of the vaccine uh, becomes uh, more apparent, especially to uh, to all those that are black and brown um, um, that really need it the most. I, I would love for you to really consider uh, making uh, the choice to take advantage of this vaccination. Uh, this not only uh, helps you individually uh, to fight against COVID-19, but it's also going to protect you uh, uh, and others that you are connected with. I just, uh, just recently learned that even though uh, you, you get this vaccination, it's incumbent upon all of us uh, to not only uh, practice uh, uh, not social distancing, but, but practice safe distancing because we still wanna stay socially connected uh, through technology, but we, all, but we wanna make sure that we are safe, wear our masks, and check up on our family and friends, even uh, during this, uh, this tragic journey that we're in. But please, please celebrate this week. Uh, not only are we celebrating the, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King this week, but we're also celebrating this joyous, joyous occasion uh, where finally uh, we can stop saying uh, uh, 45 and we can finally celebrate our 46th president of the United States, as well as this monumental historic uh, occasion where the first African-American uh, woman is going to be our vice president. So continue to keep our, uh, our church in your prayers, continue to keep our nation in your prayers, continue to uh, uh, keep our world in your prayers. This pandemic crisis is not only affecting the city of Mich the city of Detroit, the state of Michigan, the United States, but it's affecting the entire world. And so we wanna make sure uh, that we fight this virus. Thank God for all of the uh, doctors and nurses, as well as the scientists who have worked ever so diligently uh, to put us in a position where we can be safe. This is going to be a trying, a year for not only our church, uh, but our nation, as we dig ourselves out of this rut that we have uh, been spinning our wheels for the last four years. And I pray for not, I pray for success, uh, just like I prayed for success in the previous administration. But the reality is when you put someone in place that is only for themselves, when you put someone in place that only cultivates uh, racism, evil, uh, and dissension, uh, you, 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 you're you not going to be able to get orange juice from apples. But I'm excited about this new regime. I'm excited about uh, the plan that they have, not only for our nation, but I'm excited about the plan they have for us as African Americans. So we want to make sure we keep uh, uh, them close to the fire, uh, keep them honest, uh, please continue to stay in contact with your senators and your House of Representative leaders. If you see something you don't like, you see something you're uncomfortable with, make sure you stay connected and give them a call. But during this time, I strongly urge uh, you to be very cautious, very safe, and yet very hopeful uh, during this particular week. May God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. Thank you so much. I'm Pastor JT Thomas. I'm the pastor here at New Calvary Baptist Church where we are a Christ-centered church of committed Christians connecting the community with the cross of Christ. And I ask that if you are interested in becoming part of this family, 
uh, that you link up with us. Give us a call in the office, 313-923-1600, or hit me up uh, with an email. Uh, uh, and the email address is, is on uh, the screen as you see it. Connect with us uh, during Sunday school. Connect with us on our Facebook and YouTube page. Uh, make sure you continue the connection with us. And if you connect with us, we will connect you to God. That is our wish. That is our goal. That is our commission. We are a Christ-centered church of committed Christians connecting not only the church community, but the community at large with the cross of Christ. May God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. Amen. Good morning, New Calvary family and friends. Your announcements for Sunday, January 17th are as follows. Next Sunday's church school lesson is in the first quarter and it's titled Call in the New Testament. Specifically, it's titled Called as the Intercessor and the Scriptures are from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 17, verse 14 through verse number 24. Prayer line. Connect with us at 6 a.m. daily on the New Calvary Prayer Line at 712-770-5600. Again, that's 712-770-5600. The access code is 254-761-POUND. Again, that is 254 254- 761 followed by the pound sign. Prayer requests. Special prayers requested for Brother Robert Willis, Sister Lois Tilly, Sister Regina Scott Davis, Sister Vanetta Ellis. Bereaved families are requesting special prayer. The family of Mother Minnie Phoenix, the family of Hattie Barber, former member of New Calvary. The family of Victor Morris, the brother of Pamela Morris. And the family of Deacon Joseph Washington. Please keep them in your prayers. Birthdays. Although there are no birthdays uh, during this particular week, we celebrate all the birthdays and wish you a glorious day. Worship supplies. If you are in need of communion supplies, Sunday school books, or masks, please stop by the church office to obtain them. The New Calvary office hours are Sunday, 8.30 a.m. to 2 p.m., Monday and Tuesday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Thursday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Contact information. Please ensure that the church office has your current email address by sending an email to newcalvarybaptist at comcast.net. Additionally, if you are in need of assistance in creating an email address, contact the church office. At this time, on behalf of Pastor J.T. Thomas, Lady Angela, and the entire New Calvary congregation, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to everyone visiting us for the first time and to our returning visitors. Whether you are here by personal invitation or are seeking out a permanent place of worship, we're delighted to have you here.